everyone, it's Raul with R&D Moving Source Supplies. We're back with another video. Uh, we've, been, we've been doing uh, quite a bit of videos on this book, What Has It You're Moving, Where Moving is No Joke. And uh, we came in, uh, we're going to do another uh, video on another section of the book. Uh, last time we covered what you should do about six weeks before, uh, from uh, ordering your supplies to selecting the kind of boxes you're going to use, um, to uh, looking after your children, your plants, uh, taking measurements, as well as uh, having some fun and playing some music along the way as you start your packing, okay? So make a list of the music. Now we're going to look into one month before uh, you move. What should you be doing one month before you move? Uh, one of them, one of the uh, most important parts is choosing a mover. You're now about time to choose a mover. So about a month before, so you should have a list of movers, you should contact movers and do some research before one, one month, before the one month mark. But around the one month, around the one month before the move mark is when you should be able to, we should have a, a, line, a mover lined up, get in, in touch with them and select the right mover, obviously, right? We, uh, we give some details on the book about the process you should follow to choose the right mover and some caution you should take as well, some cautionary steps you should take, okay? Then you should begin uh, the packing stage, coming up with the starting to uh, pack your materials. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, now that you have so the ch chosen the boxes to, to use, you start, start looking to the packing, the, living, the labeling, labeling of the boxes, uh, as well as separating the valuables. There's certain things when you move, you're going to be cautious, more cautious with, okay? Fragiles, uh, jewelries, uh, uh, electronics, things like that. You've got to be able to uh, uh, separate all things properly to make sure that everything gets packed properly and handled properly, okay? You don't want to send jewels with your move. That's something you should be able to do it yourself. Uh, and then fragiles and things like that. You've got to be careful how you pack those things, okay? Um, now, we have a lot of packing tips uh, on the book. Again, we handle all those things here. Uh, the steps you should take, uh, how, to, uh, um, how to pack your items. We also, uh, you should have an even another very important part of your, of your move. is an inventory list. You should start to uh, track your items at this point as to what you're going to be taking with you and what you're going to be packing. You should have a list of these of these items, okay? Because you want to make sure that uh, when you pack them, you know where everything went. When you get to the other side as well, you want to make sure that when you unpack, everything is there, okay? And then address changes. Uh, you should, uh, at this point, start looking to the address changes. Now, we suggested you to do research where you're going to go. Now, you probably selected a home to go to, a new city, a new apartment. And now is the time, around one month before, to get in touch with all these companies to make sure you start uh, making the uh, changing the addresses. You want to make sure your mail starts arriving at your new location just about the time or slightly before the time when you leave. Um, after, like, and you don't want to leave things for after, because then uh, your mail will end up going to your old address. Some of you, uh, let's say the person that bought your home can be a really nice person and uh, forward your, your, your mail to your new home. In case if your post office, uh, uh, your post office makes any mistakes, you don't want to make sure, you want to make sure, in other words, you want, you want to make sure that your, your, uh, your mail goes to your right, to the right address. And the best thing to do is around one month before to start uh, tackling this, uh, this assignment. Basically, uh, start making the change of the address. You now you know your new address. So long as you know where these companies, so long as you notify these companies as to when you're going to be moving and where you're moving to, they usually are fairly accurate at making the uh, change of the address at the right time. So that when you get there, you start receiving your mail, okay? Something you should know also, should know also which I'm um, not sure if everybody knows, but you can notify, actually pay a fee to, the, to your post company, post office company, where they will actually redirect your mail. Everything that comes to your old address gets redirected to your new address. And I believe that runs for about a year or so after the move. So that should be enough time basically to handle any in the mail that comes to your old address, okay? Now, again, some important points of one month before choosing the mover. It's critical. It's a very important thing you should know when it comes to, move, when it comes to choosing a mover. There's a lot of movers. Some movers I've been, I've been, business, I've been in business for years and years great reputation some of them not the greatest 
but those people are solid. They're, they've been in business and they will be in business for a while. There's a lot of movers. I just started last week and two week, this week they're gone. They basically are, they flip quickly. They're one month movers, we call them. Because they come into the business, they don't like the business, they leave. And those tend to be very uh, flaky. So you want to be very careful. And obviously some are good. Some just started and they're probably, probably, they're probably very good. But there's a lot of movers in the business where you should, I should look through YouTube and other or in Google. Uh, bad experiences with movers. And you'll see. It can be quite bad. So you want to make sure you, you follow the process very closely of choosing the right mover. We gave some good tips on the book as to what to do. Uh, again, uh, labeling your items, that's some, that something very important as well. You want to make sure whatever you put in the box is properly labeled. labeled. You don't want to, uh, movers get, uh, not only movers, but I'm sure you or I would be frustrated as well. When somebody doesn't label a box, all of a sudden there's some special uh, crystal in there, and you handle the box properly, you just drop it slightly faster than you should, and the box cracks the dishes or the, the valuable crystals. You don't want this to happen. So you want to make sure things are properly labeled. Electronics, they don't like to be dropped. Uh, they're very sensitive. You want to make sure also that's properly labeled, okay? Another thing which we will handle later in the book and we'll discuss is when it comes to uh, how far you're moving. Some people move across the street, other moves across town, other moves uh, across states, and others move across countries. And that's where labeling is critical. You don't want to cross the border where your boxes are not properly labeled and you don't have what we mentioned already, an inventory list. Those two items, those two parts of your, uh, of your packing are critical. You get caught in the border when, when crossing countries and your, your boxes are not properly labeled and you don't have an inventory list, they can make you take everything out of the, box, the truck and everything out of the boxes. You can just imagine how bad that could be. Uh, a mover that's moving you, that gets caught in that situation, your bill is going to go through the roof. And you don't want that. So what you do, you start packing. You, let's say, put vases, kitchen vases, or kitchen dishes, whatever, or shoes, or it doesn't matter. Label on the box, uh, including what's how many dishes, whatever's in the box. Label it. Uh, of course, how many dishes is a little going a bit far. But when, when, you get, when it comes to crossing a border, they want to know what's in that truck and what's in each box. And they usually, what they usually do, the, uh, the guards, they usually go, or the officers, they go into the truck and they pick a couple boxes at random. They look at the box, they look at the list. And when they open the box, after the items are different, you're, you're in for a ride. They're going to basically pretty much, they may take you, ask you to take everything out of the box. But if you make a nice list of what a nice list of what's in the truck, okay, that's the first thing. They look through that list. They look, They may most often they just say no. They see how organized you are. They just let it go. In a very large, in, in many cases they just let it go. But in some cases they just pull you over, set you to the side. They go in, pull a few boxes out, and they confirm that you actually are being honest. They look through the list. Those items are in there, and you're good to go. You don't do that. As I mentioned, you're in for a bit of a nightmare, okay? I did have a come. I did do some work with uh, someone when I drove him to Texas, and this lady, uh, the, her parents passed away, and she wasn't all there mentally. Obviously, it's kind of hard when the, both of my parents go. So I asked her before, make sure you make a list of everything and number each box and list every box what's in the box. She didn't do it. She didn't do it. So we got to the border, and the first thing, the first thing we did is send us to the send us inside. Now they were nice to her because of the parents passing away, and I was driving the truck. I was asked to go to the to a sort of a uh, X-ray machine, and it was the, about a, there for about an hour. They scanned through the X-rays, like through everything, and we got away with it. Okay, but the the uh, the. Um, the officers did tell us that if uh, they could basically strip us, strip the entire truck apart and see everything. And I did see there in the border as we were waiting, a lot of companies. They were taking everything off the tractor trailers and going through each box. And then you're responsible to put them back into the truck. Imagine how bad that could be. So making a list of the inventory and uh, labeling each box what's in the box is critical okay plus again movers appreciate that as i mentioned i'm sure you would do as if you were the person moving yourself 
uh, because you want to know what you're handling. If there's a heavy box, you want to make sure it's a heavy box that you know how to handle it. You go pick up a box and you think it's light and all of a sudden it's really heavy and you're not expecting it, it twists you back pretty bad. And uh, this happens to a lot of movers because they unexpectedly pick up boxes a little heavier than they are and all of a sudden, boom, we have a problem. Mostly when they pack them in the truck, they want to make sure that they put the heavy ones underneath the lighter boxes on top so they don't get squished along the way, okay? So make sure you do that, okay? And, um, and I think that's it. Uh, again, we have some good tips here for packing your items, how you pack, what, what products you should use as well. And, um, and as well as I mentioned already, the, the labels, okay? The labeling. Also, the valuable, the, the, let's touch a little further into the valuables. Uh, if there's something very valuable, you don't want to hand, hand that to a mover or anybody. You want to make sure those items, you carry them, okay? Jewelry, uh, valuable electronics, things like that. You want to make sure that you handle them yourself. Uh, we have a tip here as to what you should separate those things from uh, the valuables from the non-valuable, not so many so valuable items. But yeah, you you want to make sure those things are handled properly. Again, we give tips on that for um, we give tips for that on the book as well. Okay. Uh, needless to say, it is a very handy uh, manual, a handy little book, and uh, uh, it's very gives you some great tips. Okay. Uh, we, uh, again, coming back to valuable, the valuable parts, we, uh, we're going to touch on a little further, but we have a, 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 we chose to select a different box, different color box for different color valuables so that you can look at them as sort of the uh, standout box. And that, oh, that, those boxes don't go in there. We carry them. Sort of like that. You want to make sure the boxes stand out so you don't mix them or make any mistakes by shipping them through the wrong, uh, the wrong medium, okay? And I think that's it. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, it's a very helpful book. Uh, we, we've been uh, doing some videos on this and we'll continue to do it, basically summarizing the book for you. Uh, and we hope, to be, we hope to be helpful for you, okay? Any questions you might have, post them below. Any comments, we appreciate it. Uh, like this video, uh, share it with anyone that might need it. Definitely, we'll, we'll be very ha happy to uh, reach as many people as we can and subscribe to the channel if you find this helps you or helps somebody that needs or even when you when you like it uh, when you like it on the on the system the algorithms push it forward and uh, we hope to, again because this uh, is a critical uh, part of everyone's journey in life sometimes we move and we want to make sure we you know we get as much information as many details as possible on the process so that makes it for a smooth a smooth process okay uh, let us know again if you have any questions and we appreciate your time and look forward to seeing you next video. Thank you.